Good morning everybody! We just woke up and we decided we have to make this video because it's already September 17th and it's almost October and we had to get this video out for our Patreons who voted on this specific video of 10 things you can't do in Hawaii. So we're doing them right now. We have the list, we just gotta tell you guys what it is. So number one, get mail. So we don't have an address where we can get US Postal we can get uh, UPS and FedEx, but we can't get USPS. We haven't tried getting uh, FedEx or UPS. Yeah, our neighbors have done it, but we haven't. We haven't tried it yet. Um, but um, basically, when you live where we live, this kind of area, you have to get a P.O. box, and the waiting time to get an actual box um, at your local post office could take over two years, because we applied about two years ago and still nothing so yeah and that's actually most places here don't get mail like all the subdivisions they don't get mail so it's not there are some places that do have uh, mailboxes that get mail and sometimes we send our mail to our friends in Hilo and they get mail number two walk barefoot you can't walk barefoot here for various reasons um, the main reason is because the ground is very rough in most places um, a lot of lava. Yes, a lot Sharp of lava, lava. rocks. Um, from our own experience, on our property, we cannot walk barefoot if we don't want to get cuts and scrapes all over our yeah. feet. Because a lot of the weeds are <clears throat> sharp and uh, razor blady. Razor grass. <laughs> yes. And the sensitive grass has thorns all over it. Um, yeah. And then the rest is just all cinder. We can't walk on that comfortably. But um, even at the beaches, there's all lava there mm -hmm. usually. And, and if it's like black sand beach, the sand gets really hot, so if you're trying to walk barefoot on that nice sand, it's like boiling hot. Yeah. Now, of course, you can walk barefoot at certain places, but it's not a very barefoot-friendly island. Yeah. Also, another barefoot thing, there's, and this might tie into other things that you can't do on the island, but there's fire ants, uh, like in all random public parks. Um, try to walk around barefoot, you'll probably get bit by fire ants. Or you might step on a slug and get rat lungworm disease. Okay. Number three, commute by bike. This one is pretty true if we say commute by bike successfully and consistently. Where we are, to get into town, which is where you would mostly be commuting to, right? It's like at least like a 20, 15 to 20 mile one way. And it's mostly on the highway. And the main reason why I don't like to do it is because the weather can be so unpredictable yeah. that you could be like, oh, it's a nice day, it's not going to rain. And then you're riding, and then halfway through your ride, it just starts downpouring, and then you get to wherever you're going soaking wet. Number four is use salt in a salt shaker or even a salt lamp. Uh, Paulina bought a salt lamp one day. She was so excited. We, she brought it home. And then, like, we started noticing this thing starts just melting. Um, it's so humid here that the salt lamps just melt. And it was, yeah. like, nice and jagged, like, looking like a crystal. And then all of a sudden, it's just, like, this round, like... Pink blob. <laughs> and it also leaked all the salt water down our wall. So now, like, the wood has, like, salt in it and it stays moist. Might mm -hmm. have contributed to some mold in that area over there. Yeah, and with the salt shakers, it gets all caked up at the top. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is put in a, um, a sealable pouch, like airtight, and then we have a little spoon in there, and that seems to work good. Yeah. But it is a little bit of a pain. Any salt that you have will get caked up, and like that also goes for any spices. Yeah, a lot too. of spices too, but salt especially. Mm -hmm. Number five, have nice things. So you can't have nice things here for several reasons. One big reason is because of the mold. Um, on this part of the island, the mold is very prevalent. So we have like a really beautiful white dress that you're trying to save, um, or a really nice car that you're trying to not get all gross. It's probably gonna get all moldy and disgusting eventually. So you can't really have those things here unless you take like a lot of measures to keeping it um, in good condition. Like Michael has like all of his camera stuff and he has to make sure all the time that he keeps it in his like dry yeah. box with all the desiccants in it. 
Is that what they're called? Yeah. Yeah, the desiccants. Um, Silicon packs. Mm -hmm. um, but that is like a, a sealed pelican case and it has rubber gaskets and I loaded it with these, all the stuff mm -hmm. that you get in foods that have, have to keep things dry. Like we can save those and <laughs> put them in there. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, everything will get moldy. Like, if you have a favorite hat, if you have a favorite backpack, it's going to get moldy. Yeah, and even, like, you try to store things away that you don't use much, mm -hmm. and then when you take them out, it just smells horrible. You have to air it out yeah. and you maybe wash a little mold off. Yeah, um, so here it goes a long way to be, like, super minimalist in what you have and just, like, use recycle things as much as you can because... Nice things just do not last here. Also, you can't have nice things because people like to steal your things. <laughs> um, so if you have like nice things in your house and you go away for a weekend, you might come back and see that they're missing because uh, I guess it's the drug addicts that like to come around yeah. and steal your shit. And it's a lot of the time people that uh, leave for a long time and their mm -hmm. house is just sitting there. And the thieves here just don't take things in your house. They'll actually take your whole house. <laughs> like we've heard reports of people saying, They like, stole my windows. Yeah, like <laughs> take windows out of houses. Take I've, I've heard of people taking entire houses. And somebody just recently told me that uh, they had their whole catchment stolen. They were only gone a week. And imagine you had a swimming pool in your backyard and you came home and it was gone. Like that's pretty much what a catchment is. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, yeah, you, you just can't have nice things because of that. All right, number six, swim in a river. So in this side of the island, there's tons of rivers all over and waterfalls, beautiful, beautiful stuff. But you can go swimming in the rivers because it's super, super dangerous. I thought this was because of the staff. Oh, well, okay. We, you can go swimming in the rivers because of various reasons, but mostly... I feel that it's because it's super dangerous. I've heard so many stories of friends who had friends who went jumping in the river and then get sucked down into the lava tubes and died. So it's not safe. Yeah. Um, also, it's flash flooding that could happen. It's super common. Um, so the only time you really could swim in the river is if you're willing to risk your life. Yeah, and I actually thought we wrote this down for a different reason. Um, if you have any sort of cuts on yourself, you could potentially get staff, and it's happened to a lot of people. I had a cut. Open wounds. So if you have any open wounds, you definitely don't want to go in the rivers because you'll most likely get staff. And even had a friend that um, he thinks that he got an infection in his tooth from the river. Just the water settled mm -hmm. in under his tooth and it um, infected his tooth. Yeah, there's so much staff in the water here. Yeah. And even in the ocean water, too. Okay, number seven. Number seven. You can't eat local lettuce here. All right, so the reason why you can't eat lettuce here is because of this disease called rat lungworm disease. And that is basically a parasite that gets carried through rats and slugs in the cycle. symbiotic cycle of parasite living in these rats and slugs. So the slugs will carry the parasite in them or on them in their slime. Um, and when they go on your lettuce, they can leave the parasite in their slime or the let the slugs actually stay in the yeah. lettuce and they could be like really tiny slugs that you don't yeah. see. So if you are like, oh, I have a garden, I'm going to eat this beautiful lettuce out of my garden. I'm not even going to wash it because it's organic and pure. And then you eat it and then you eat the slug or the slime with the parasite in it. You're going to get meningitis and it can be very very severe even fatal if you eat enough slugs that yeah. have the parasite um, but basically you're paralyzed for at least a year and it's horrible and we don't know anyone personally but we know of people who know people, who know people that yeah. have gotten it and yeah. it was just a life-ruining disease yeah so if you were to eat local lettuce that you grew or somebody else here you'd have to walk like take every leaf off wash it completely and then cut mm -hmm. it. Most people just get a head of lettuce and chop it and it's real easy, but it could take you, I don't know, an extra half hour to do this process. Yeah, you have to really like inspect every leaf. And this goes not just for lettuce, but also for any vegetables that you're growing on the ground that you're eating like directly. Yeah. Um, so... Most people just buy uh, imported lettuce 
you know, heads mm-hmm. of romaine. They don't even bother because it's like too risky. Mm-hmm. Um, or they're just lazy. <laughs> And then number eight, this is also relating to food you can't eat, and that is basically all the fruits that you get on the mainland that are super popular, such as apples, peaches, berries, watermelon. You can't eat that here. Why? Because it doesn't grow here. So obviously you can get that stuff here, but number one, it's going to be way more expensive, and number two, it's going to taste horrible. So Because mm-hmm, it's not obviously fresh, because you have to import it all the way to this island. Yeah. So whenever we go back to the mainland, we're just... Like, oh my god, an apple! It's so exotic! Yeah. (laughs) Like, the fruits that used to be common to us and mostly everyone, apples and blueberries, they're now exotic to us. Yeah. Oh, and like, it's super expensive getting berries here. Like, Mm. a little, those little tiny little cartons of blueberries is like $7 at like the grocery store. Like a half pint. Yeah. And you'll probably only get them on a discount once they're like going really moldy and then they will have to like reduce the price on it. Honey Chris from Washington. It's actually pretty good. Alright, uh, number nine is dig holes. And this is something I found out. I had no clue that you couldn't really dig holes here. So I bought... um banana cakeys. First thing I planted was bananas and I bought a shovel to dig a hole for it. <laughs> and as soon as I started digging, I realized there's no dirt, it's just all rocks. So you can't really use a shovel to dig here. To dig a hole, it's more like just sticking a crowbar called OO bar here and you just move rocks and pull them out. So I don't know if that's, I guess it's still considered digging, but it's not standard like shovel yeah. digging dirt. Mm-mm. So, if you're thinking about using a shovel to dig here, think again. You don't dig holes, you excavate holes yeah. here. <laughs> and even in some places, the lava is just a slab, so you can't d- even dig there. Yeah, you have to rip it up yeah. first, and then you can excavate. And number 10. Number 10. Last but not least, this is something that is very common here that you can't do and I think everyone pretty much knows this that lives here and that is that you can't get attached to anything like places people or things because in this island everything changes and everything moves around constantly that nothing stays the same here like ever and a main example of that most recently is the lava flows that destroyed such beautiful places that people like held so close to their hearts with like memories and places that they just love to visit all the time and places that they saw in the future that they could visit with their kids and such as the warm pond or the champagne ponds the tide pools yeah. even pohoiki like all of that is completely changed or destroyed you can't go back to the same way that it used to be. So you can't well, get attached to In the to Pohiki that. case though, I think it's actually better. Yeah. You can't actually get there right now, but I'm sure they'll build a road to it mm-hmm. in the future. Uh, they have quite a ways to go through uh, lava flow to make a road there. But it is a beautiful black sand beach and there's natural warm ponds mm-hmm. over yeah. there behind it. So, yeah, but then again, like we saw this beautiful beach and we're like, oh my God, I can't wait to see it. But right now I know like I can't get attached to this beach yet because what if yeah. it gets destroyed again? So yeah. I'm just like enjoying it or for the memory that it gave me the other day and that's it. Yeah. I'm not going to get attached to it. And even people, you can't get attached to people. A lot of people come here and, um, they, leave. and they leave. A lot of our friends have come for... Uh, a year or so, which a lot of people do. They just come here to do like this self transformation, mm-hmm. and it's a really healing place for a lot of people. But when it's over, they just leave. And yeah, I I find that a lot of people don't come here to like settle down. They come here for like an experience, mm-hmm. and then the island kind of just like sends, sends you off way. on your new <laughs> adventure. So. Even us, like, we we haven't been here, like, permanently since we first got established here. We've been coming and going, and when I, at work, like, 
and one of my other jobs, I noticed that like every single week people were like getting hired and then mm-hmm. fired and then they were leaving. It was just like coming and going. And then at the zip line job, like pretty much half of the people that were working there when I started are now gone. Yeah. So like you just have to get used to this like constant motion of people like in and out of your life. Yep. So that's our list of 10 things you can't do in Hawaii. Um, I hope it was a little bit funny. That was the intention. <laughs> well, it's, it is funny, but it's super true. And yeah. it's stuff that we wish we knew before coming here. But then again, it's good discovering things for yourself as you're living here. Yeah. So thank you for watching this video. Make sure to comment below uh, if you have anything to say about our list. Yeah, if you have uh, any input, I'm sure you'll be like, hey, I can actually do that. <laughs> like, that's not true. Like, yeah, I know, but... Really enjoy all the comments, mm-hmm. though. When we, get, when we make a video that gets tons of comments, we, we love to read them all. Yeah, so. um, and if maybe we can make, like, like a follow-up video on some of these things to go more in-depth about it. Um, if I don't you'd know, like, yeah. Maybe, like, about rat lung or fire ants. We can talk about those things. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a good day. We got it. You think it was good? Mm-hmm. It is what it is. You think the intro could have been better? Mm-hmm. <coughs> Maybe.